Ladies and gentlemen, tie a smile on yourself! Yeah, hell yeah! <laughs> How's it going, y'all? What's up, buddy? How are you doing? Appreciate you uh, jumping in and hanging with us, man. How, how's your day going? Been doing great, you know, just, just staying busy, you know, getting uh, active in the L.A. music scene and all that. I've um, been doing a lot of recording here in my home studio, doing drum tracks for different bands and different artists and stuff like that. So name drop you know, some name some grind. name drop some bands that you're working with right now, as far as just like your the drum tracking that you're doing. Oh, okay. Um, if that's cool. Well, so that's there's cool. A, a band I'm working with. Um, so there's this band from Cheyenne, Wyoming called uh, Blissful Little Me. They're gonna put out their EP I think later next month. And then there's another band that I'm working with. Um, I'm also doing some mixing for them. Uh, they're called Solarist, and they're out of South Carolina. And I'm, I'm mixing some tracks, and I'm going to be featured on a couple tracks, I think, as well, doing Solarist, some drums, sounds... and then some other stuff I've done, you know. So, Solaris you know. <laughs> does sound familiar. Um, for those for those that may not know you, Ty, could you please properly introduce yourself? Uh, let us know. I mean, I know you're in California, but let us know whereabouts in the world you are to those that may not know. And uh, really quick, plug or promote anything you'd like. Okay, sounds great. Um, so my name is Ty Del Rose. I am the drummer of Smile Empty Soul. I've been the touring and recording drummer of Smile Empty Soul since 2018. Um, I'm originally from Chicago, but just last year I moved out to the suburbs of L.A. I'm up in this little desert town called Palmdale, about 65, 70 miles north of L.A. Um, I've been out here just, you know, grinding and, you know, Palmdale, you say? Because that's what I love to do. Dude, Palmdale, you, know, yep. <laughs> you know, I'm in, I'm in Asperia. Oh, is that right? You're not too far, dude. Hell yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, kind of crazy small close. world. Um, how did how did Sean go about finding you and getting you into the band? So back in 2016, I used to tour with a band called Romantic Rebel. And our last tour as a band was as direct support for Smile Empty Soul on their Shapeshifter tour throughout that summer. And uh, two years later, after uh, their, their old drummer had left and they had a different guy who had some engagements and he wasn't able to do a tour that was coming up sean actually reached out to me on instagram and was like hey man i might need a drummer for this tour is that something you might be interested in i was just like hell yeah that's something i'd be interested in let's do it and you know fast forward to four years later and, and we're still doing it that's so. awesome it on on the wikipedia page it says it's just the two just you and sean do you do you guys have like touring musicians for everything else or is it more of like a come and go obviously you're the two brainchilds to keeping it going but how, how does that go about for for just having a two-piece band but really the full show is you know the full band well actually as of uh, the first tour that we did after covid like when we first started touring at the beginning of 2021 we have actually just been a two-man band it's just been me and sean up there on stage is there so there's got to be like some form of like a lot of backing tracks and stuff like that do you have like triggers or anything nope. no it's just you two no no backing track no backing track no click track none of that it's just so so sean uh, upgraded his guitar with this little pickup that's called a little thunder and what it does is you put it in i think he's got it in his neck pickup i want to say and it you can select it to either the first first two or first three strings it'll actually transpose that signal down an octave in real time and it comes with a stereo output jack so that you can split those signals. So he's got the guitar signal going to his guitar chain and then his guitar amp and the bass signal is totally separate and it goes to his bass amp. And then I'm up there on front with, with him with the drums. And so, yeah, it's just the two of us. We haven't had a, a touring bassist in, in quite a while now. So. Dude, you're, you're living in the year 3000. You're ahead of the game right now with all that. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> what, yeah. it, what is it? Yeah, I gotta a, say like, uh, what is a day in the life of Ty like? I know you're working with other bands. Um, I'm sure you're just in between tours right now. But what is a what is a basic off day look like for you, sir? Um, basic off day um, just depends on what I'm what I'm in the mood to do. You know, so I I hustle when I'm off tour. I do a little bit of DoorDash. I, I deliver around here in the community, and 
all that kind of stuff. So I, I do that for a couple hours. I've recently gotten really into cooking and trying to sharpen my cooking skills up. Excellent. So I, I, I make a I make a mean fettuccine Alfredo. I've been working on perfecting that Alfredo recipe. <laughs> Hell yeah, I love um, it. Yeah. Yeah, but other than that, you know, I'll just I'll zone out and I'll I'll just listen to music on my nice little I got my speakers like literally right here at the foot of my bed and I'll just listen to music for hours a day. And like sometimes I'll look up at night and I'll be like, oh, shit, it's already three o'clock, four o'clock in the morning. Like cause I'll get so into it, you know, who, who are you just jamming looking for all kinds of stuff. who are you jamming musically? I, I jam all kinds of stuff. I mean, I jam all kinds of stuff. So I, I always go back to classic rock. You know, Rush and Led Zeppelin are my two favorite bands. They always have been, you know, my biggest influences. But I'm into a lot of, like, the 90s grunge stuff. I'm into a lot of – I've been on a really, like, big, like, blues and soul and, like, jazzy kick lately. I like to kind of tone it down sometimes. Um, I also love, like, just going to shows around here and seeing what, like, hot local bands are playing. And, you know, if there's any, like, you know, rock bands or any, like, high-energy shows that, like, really, really tickle my fancy, you know? That's kind of how we met the other day. Uh, how did you How did you first meet Warrior Dave? Face paint Warrior Dave. Um, well, I met him my first time playing in California with Smile was was at the Whiskey back in 2018, and and he showed up. You know, he's he's been a big supporter for a long time. You know, he showed up. He got some people to show up, and just kept the energy going, and and we just clicked. You know, and I've stayed in touch with him here and there ever since. And then when I moved out here, it's like, okay, who do I know? Because I don't really know anybody out here, and you know, so we went to a show up at this American Legion up here in Lancaster last summer. A couple of local bands had a little show. And then uh, I've been going down to the Whiskey and, you know, going to Ultimate Jam Night. And then he had that show two weeks ago that I, I met you at. He had, they had Bantamweight and a bunch of other awesome local bands. Cerebellion was another one that I really liked. Um, it was a lot of fun. It was a lot of fun, man. Uh, what what would you say in, in Smile's set? Is the hardest song for you to play drum wise? The hardest song for me to play drum wise. Ooh, that's a tough one because every every song's got its own unique challenge. Um, I would say the one that def one that definitely requires a lot of concentration for me that we've been reincorporating into the set lately is 1984 because that one's got a bit of an odd time signature. And it's really important to like kind of keep that groove flowing in the verse and the chorus. Like, like I said, we don't really play to a click or nothing. So like I try to keep the verse like kind of laid back behind the beat and then the chorus, like you push the beat a little bit without pushing it too much, you know? So it just requires a certain level of concentration, but oh, yeah. I'd say that's probably one that's definitely a challenge for me. What, what kind of, what kind of movies are you into? Are you like horror, science fiction, action? When you go to the theater, like what's, what's the genre that you prefer to watch? Um, well, to be honest, I actually haven't really been to the theater or seen any like new new movies lately. Um, but I've always been really into comedies. Like that's always kind of been my go-to. Um, when I was younger, I used to watch a lot of like sports movies. Um, I saw that Netflix recently put Coach Carter up there. That was my favorite movie <laughs> for a long time. Sam Jackson. I was always really into basketball, and that was like my scene when I was in like middle school, like early high school, and all that. So, <laughs> so you used to you used to play one. basketball um, all the time. I, very badly, but yeah, I enjoyed it. <laughs> I was more of a volleyball. I played volleyball in high school for a couple of years. We, we did a couple of tournaments and all that. <laughs> I remember, I remember when I was a kid. Uh, my well, believe it or not, a lot of people don't know this, but uh, in the mods and stuff. But my dad actually tried out for the majors uh, in baseball, and he hit the first pitcher mm -hmm. that that uh, he was a pitcher, and he I'm sorry, he hit the first batter that was up on the plate, and they were like, "This isn't going to work out." You would always want me. I loved basketball, and I was okay, I'd say. But um, he wanted me to play baseball, and I remember in like second or third grade, when when you first get to like kids pitch, the the kid beamed me in the ribs, and my ribs were like purple, and I never wanted to play baseball again. And I was like, I'm playing basketball all the time. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> who's a who's a yeah, I... who's your NBA NBA teams that you follow regarding basketball? Um, well, I've always been a Chicagoan at heart, so Chicago Bulls is where it's at for me. And same with like pretty much anything, like Chicago Blackhawks for hockey. Um, when it comes to baseball, I'm a Cubs fan, always have been. <laughs> Sorry to all my White Sox fans, lovers, and all that. Um, yeah, I've, I've always been Chicago through and through. Oh yeah, shout out to Michael Jordan. Um, in in the oh, yeah. in the the set that you guys are playing right now, as far as smile. 
what can we expect in the set? Like, do we get all the classics? Of course, I imagine Bottle is always played. But uh, is there is there some older jams worked in with the new stuff? Um, what can you tell us about the set that you guys have going on right now? I think it's cool that it's just a two piece, first of all. But uh, what can you tell us about the set? For, for yeah, those that well, haven't well, seen, we it. have a bunch of albums. We have a bunch of albums out now, so we try to incorporate a little bit of everything, at least like maybe one song from each album or as many as we can. You know, we only do about like an hour set, like when we headline and we have other bands that play before us. So, but that's the thing about us being a two piece is there are certain songs that we can't play that are just physically impossible. If the bass line doesn't follow the guitar at least closely, it, there's certain songs like like Nowhere Kids is actually a uh, big hit of ours that we can't do because there's just so many like different things with the bass and the guitar. It's like Sean has to do a lot of pedal dancing to pull it off and it's just pretty much impossible. But like Bottom of a Bottle obviously is a staple. Like we'd probably get killed if we didn't play that one. <laughs> um, but we try to feature a couple, at least one or two songs off whatever new album we're touring in support of. And then there's a couple of like older ones. Like we've been playing To the Ground off of Anxiety the last couple tours. That That's another one that's one of my favorites to play. It's got a nice little energy to it. So a little bit of everything, I would say. Do you have the freedom and or time to possibly tour with another act? Or is it full time smile and and there's just no time to do anything else like that? Um, well, usually our tour schedule, we're, we're starting to get back to our pre-COVID usual tour schedule now that things are like open back up mm -hmm. on a wide scale. And typically it's like every three months or so we'll go out for about three or four weeks at a time. And then we're home the rest of the time. Like, and then we'll have studio plans in between all that. So, I mean, yeah, I would, I would always love or be open to, you know, if I had the right opportunity to go on tour with another band or even like as crew for another band, like as a drum tech or something like that, you know, I'd, I'd always be open to, to opportunities like that, you know, as long as it doesn't conflict with our schedule, which we have booked really well in advance. You know, I'm always trying to stay musically busy, you know, as, as a drummer, is there a particular style that isn't rock that you, that you like jamming on the side? Like, let's say like this hip hop artist is like, I want a drummer for my live show. Like, does that interest you? Or do you kind of want to keep it rock? Are you willing to go like EDM drumming? Like what, what's your versatility and likeness on that? Oh, dude, I love all kinds of music, man. Like I, like I said, I've been in like a big like blues and like soul kick lately. Um, Hell yeah. Actually, a few months ago, there was this open jam night I went to in South Central LA that was more like hip hop and R and B kind of just really groovy and really like funky kind of stuff. I, I love playing drums, so that kind of stuff. Um, I've toured with like or not toured with. I've played gigs with like country bands and like pop artists and all kinds of stuff. I'm open to literally anything. Is, I find beauty and grooving to anything. Is there a particular style that you're just like, ah, all right, it's, it's a paying gig, so I'm gonna play it, but low key inside you're like, mm, I don't really want to do this reggaeton gig or whatever genre it may be, not the crap on reggaeton, but just. Um, I mean, not really. I mean, like anytime I'm up there grooving, like it's always a good time. Um, I mean, where I kind of like, like fall short is like, I've never been good with like double bass. So like the big, like speed metal, like death metal thing, like that's not really my forte as far as like my drumming abilities, but like anything else, like, like, I'll, like I'll play country, I'll play blues, I'll play like rock pop. I've done like yacht rock and disco gigs. Like there's, there's not really much that I don't enjoy playing disco gigs. Hell yeah. I love it. Oh, well, just because, you know, I felt like it was time for a change. Um, Sean actually lives in Arkansas now. He's not in LA. So I actually moved further away from him, but you know, I'm a musician I know LA has a very vibrant music scene and there's a lot of diversity here and a lot of, a lot of artists like that are up and coming, you know, and I just kind of came down here to make some connections and, and see what happens, you know, and I just happened to have like a low rent situation. So it just kind of worked out. It's one of those, I'm just going to go and see what happens. And if I hate it, you know, I can always move back, you know, that's true. You can, you could always move back. Um, What's what is your favorite song? I want to play one of one of your guys' songs. What is your favorite song in the set to play that's not a song that we would know? I mean, we know pretty much these top five ones right here for for radio reasons. But what's one uh, of your favorites in the set that we may not know um, on a regular basis? Um. Well, I was gonna say so. Black pilled right there is our latest album. Um. And I don't know if you if you even want to pull the music video up. I mean, whatever you want to do, but. Um, Bitterness and Bleach is one that we've been playing that I'm really, really proud of how that one turned out. Let's check it out right now. 
banger. It's a banger, dude. Bitterness and bleach. I'd not heard this song. This is fire. Who who did the who did the audio <laughs> uh, the audio production for it? Um, so we recorded that at Firebrand Recording in St. Louis, Missouri, and then we sent it off to uh, Jimmy Alexander, and he's down in Australia, and he's the one who mixed the, the the whole album, and he also mixed our EP Sheep from 2019 as well. So you'd definitely work with him again, as you have twice now. So you'd work with him a third time, you're saying? This was our this was our second EP with him. Well, okay. I should say full length. Our, our last one was an EP. Our second release that we've done. So yeah, I mean, there's a bit of a working relationship there for sure. Is there is there a particular producer that maybe you and Sean discussed like in the past? Like, man, I really like to work with this guy. It just hasn't worked out with. Maybe it's a feature or just uh, like a a guest solo, like anything. Oh man, well there's there's a lot of talented producers out there. I mean, that's kind of a tough question. Um, before I was in Smile, when I was in Romantic Rebel, we actually recorded an EP with Johnny K, but that never actually got digitally released. We sold it at our merch table on that last tour when we were out with Smile, but it never got the light of day on Spotify or Apple Music. We kind of tried to do the whole like, you know, taking the whole like physical CD back and like well, let's try not releasing it digitally and see if that helps our album sales and it just kind of turned out to not really work out too well but you know johnny k is a producer that i'd absolutely love to work with again in the future if the opportunity were to ever come back up like whether to fill in on drums for like like some like solo artist or like a band that like needs a drummer or any anything like that you know so so this album is still not digitally released that you're talking about so it's like a collector's no, item. The one that, We're talking about uh, rebel the one that i did in 2016 with roman no it, it was released we just never released it digitally so it's it's hard to find. It's a collector's item. You get a hold of that. It's like it's like yeah. it's damn near gold. <laughs> two that two three thousand dollars a CD at this point. I would imagine. Let's, you never you never know. You never know what the future may hold. <laughs> Let's jam a little bit more of this new song because I was feeling it. As as a, a two piece, do you find that you do a lot of backing vocals on on the live on the live show, or are you, do you have no backing vocals? Um, Sean's the only vocal. He does it all himself and i just keep the beat just keep yes. the energy going and it's all because of the the split master thing that you were talking about that i i don't play guitar so i don't i lost you when you said it but it just i just heard dang one goes this way one goes that way and then a full band but it's a two-piece that's just so cool so cool <laughs> what's up what's yeah, another say, it's a blast what's a another track that you guys off of black pill that you'd prefer that we play Maybe uh, Exodus off of Black Pill. or Sunburn. Um, those are both good ones. Um, Sunburn's a little more high energy. It's got a cool little vibe to it. Exodus is more of a chill acoustic track. So I'll leave that up to you. Whatever you're feeling, whatever you're vibing to right now. Let's go. Let's go upbeat energy. All right. Sunburn. By the way, right before you came on, I have not forgotten chat. Right, I mean, like literally milliseconds, because I didn't know. Like we were talking on Instagram, and I was like, "Yeah, whatever." And now, twenty minutes, whatever. I was like, I had no idea when you were come on. And the wheel, we do this thing. I'll explain in a minute. Where if I, I ask you trivia, and uh, if you get it right, you get a wheel spin. And some of the wheel spins that it lands on is torture for me. And it landed on hot sauce, <laughs> pork grind, spicy jelly bean. So I have to combo all these things together right now and take a bite. So right now, if you see me suffering oh in the background due to uh, overwhelming spice, that's what it is. This is Sunburn. We're hanging out with Ty of Smile, Anti Soul. Yeah, it's dope. It's so good, man. It's so good. Who who inspired you to pick up drumsticks when you were a kid? Who inspired me to pick up when I was a kid? So I actually started playing when I was nine years old and I was in the elementary school band. I remember sitting in class one day and the band director came to talk to us about the band program and you know all the things that we were gonna be able to do. And as soon as he said, you guys are gonna get to record a CD, I was like, ooh, I'm in, I wanna do it. But percussion, believe it or not, was actually my third choice. I wanted to play the saxophone, but I was a scrawny little kid and that was a little too heavy for me. And then it was the trumpet after that, but you have to blow into it a very specific way and I couldn't figure it out. So, but when he handed me the sticks and a little practice pad, it just came super naturally to me. Like he'd show me something and it's like, you know, hey, I'm doing this. Like, I, I think I'm gonna stick with this and see what happens. And, you know, then I just, just kept going from there and I got my first kit when I was almost 12. 
And then I saw Rush for the first time. That oh, that did it. When I was 12. That'll do on it. On their 30th anniversary tour. And then I saw Neil Peart do his epic drum solo, the, the late, great Neil Peart, you know, my biggest influence. The and he's greatest. Like, I'm just like, that's what I want to do. That's what I want to do for the rest of my life. I never, ever got the opportunity to see Rush live, so I'm jealous. But Oh, uh, man. I saw them man. seven times. No, it's amazing. Rest <laughs> in peace. Ironically, my story is like vice versa of yours. I went to a, a very expensive like private school in when I was a kid, and I, we had to play an instrument. You had to. It was a requirement. You had to. You had to. It was a requirement in the small private school. And I picked oh, wow. up the drumsticks, and my mom said, those are too loud. Put them down. She hands me oh, a clarinet, oh. and I played the clarinet for about six or seven years. To this day, if I picked up a clarinet, I couldn't. I'd be, I don't, I don't know what I'm doing. But um, uh, I wish I had. She would. They would let me have played the drums, because uh, oh, you know it's never too late to pick the six back up, though. You know it's true. You're right. It's never too late. <laughs> Ty, are you down to, re to review a couple of local bands with us? Maybe let us know what they need, yeah, don't absolutely. need, advice for bands. Really quick, while I'm loading that up, is there is there a particular piece of advice that you've been given by somebody in the past that just it just resonated with you so strongly. You you really enjoyed this particular piece of advice and you'd like to share it. Okay. Um, so a long time ago, and this is kind of more specific to like performance wise. Um, I auditioned for a jazz fusion band called Marbin back in 2015. And these guys are from Chicago. Well, actually they're Israeli, but they, they're based in Chicago and they're like super, super talented. And I knew that I didn't quite, you know, at the time my skills weren't quite what they needed to be to get a gig like that. Cause like, it's a lot of super intense, like fusion drumming. But the one thing that stuck with me when I auditioned, they're like, you know, cause I would kind of drag a little bit because like some of those passages were really fast and you know, they, the slightest inconsistency in my playing, like they would notice. And the thing that the guitar player said to me that like kind of stuck was like, I feel like you're trying too hard to match our time, but we're doing things with time. So it's like, you know, I was busy like listening and like playing along to what I'm listening to, but it's like I needed to find that confidence and like keep that beat going, you know? So that's a piece of advice that always stuck with me that I just kind of have always tried to take to heart every time I get behind a kit. So basically just don't be like one, two, three, four, just like groove on it and just let it flow naturally. And if it needs a little off time hit here and there, just, just do what this track needs instead of just being so monotone. Exactly. And like, you know, basically like, you know, as a drummer, like, you know, there's times where you kind of do want to follow, but you also need to be able to lead. And they wanted more of like a leader, not somebody who like followed what they did, if that makes sense, you know? Yeah, it totally does make, it does make sense. Um, okay, I do want to play you a couple local bands real quick, and then I do want to see if I can stump you on trivia. I'll explain what that is in a second. This is a band I reviewed the other day called Seek Harbor. What do you think of Seek Harbor? Seek Harbor, right on. Yeah, that was a good one. Like It was really catchy, and that's a super professionally done lyric video. I'm, I'm digging it. Yeah, it's, it's a definitely a professional lyric video for sure. It is, it is pretty catchy, I would say. I agree. Um, Ty, what's... You said comedy earlier is your favorite your favorite uh, f form of film when when to make you laugh. What is what would you say is the most funny film you've ever seen, and you can still go back to this day and watch it, and you still laugh every time. The most funny film that I could go back to every time, and I laugh every time. Oh man! Well, I've always been a huge Trailer Park Boys fan. Yes, like I've seen everyone. Movies. I've seen everyone. <laughs> yeah. Hell yeah! Yeah. The second movie in particular, Countdown to Liquor Day, that one, that one's absolutely hilarious. I always, I always get a kick out of that one. There, there was a man. It's J Mac has a a line that somebody did like a meme of the other day, and I saw it and I and I showed my wife and she was like, I don't understand what is happening. Why are you showing me this? And I it, like when I saw it, I burst. You had just had to see Trailer Park Boys if you, if you're not familiar with that show. It's terrible, but in the most A plus awesome way. Like it is absolutely, oh, absolutely, it's such gold. There's so many funny things. It's something about, man, I don't remember. You know how J Mac is, but anyway, um, <laughs> let's go back to Black Pilled and uh, let's play one more, one more jam from Black Pilled before we run out of time. Uh, what is, what is your personal favorite track on the album that we haven't played yet? My personal favorite that we haven't played yet. Uh... 
Um, you know, I'm gonna I'm gonna throw you a little curveball. I'm gonna say the Martyr. It's a little more of a chill piano track that I really dig. Cool. Can you play other instruments besides drums? Like, can you play piano? Um, not very well. Like, I I can understand it well enough. Like, if I had a MIDI controller and I was like composing something on the computer, I could do it. But like. I'm kind of sloppy if I'm like playing it live and same with guitar and bass. Like I play for songwriting purposes cause I love to write and I love to just jam, but drums is where my main like talent set is at. I gotcha. The martyr. Check it out. So I, every now and then try to throw an idea to a bigger time artist and it never sticks, but I'm just going to throw it out anyway. <laughs> They're like, who the f are you to tell me what? But anyway, I think it'd be cool if, Maybe Sean opened the set with this somehow. I don't. Maybe just just one time you hit like some kind of back and track just one time, or maybe the sound guy knows to play this as far as the piano, and then you come out and then and then you go right into a heavier song. But you like you just open it softly like this, just to be like, what is happening? And then it just gets energy. Anyway, I'm sure you hate that idea, and, and I'll let I'll let you, the professional, do do you. <laughs> Hey, I, I, hey, I've seen bands pull that off, though, before, I'll be honest. I mean, I've seen, like, some bands, they'll come out there, and it'll be, like, all chill, and, like, you know, it's all, like, okay, this is, like, chill and vibey, and then all of a sudden, it's just, like, <laughs> I mean, you, you catch everyone off guard, I feel like, but I feel like it'd be kind of cool, you know? So, I mean, I don't know. We'll, we'll keep it in mind. <laughs> For sure. Uh, besides, besides the whiskey show that we met at, is there another band recently that you've seen at either Viper or just any any venue that you just were like, oh my god, this band's amazing, and it was a smaller local band that we don't know about? Yes, there actually is. Um, so there's actually, well, there's there's actually two two man bands in particular around here that I really really enjoy. One of them is Bantam Weight. They played at the Whiskey that night that we met. Those guys are, that's one of the best bands I've seen in a long time. Like, honestly, like, those guys need to be touring. Those guys need to be doing, like, so much. How are they not signed? Um, it's unbelievable. It's unbelievable. Right? But there's another band, but there's another band that they did a show with up here in Palmdale at Transplants. Um, another two-man band called The Frequency of Bread. And they're, like, a young two-man math rock duo. And those guys are, they, those guys have so much talent. They're super <laughs> awesome dudes. Of they, bread. they brand themselves really well. Yeah. Yeah, those guys are fun. I, I love I've seen them three times out here now and those guys kill it every time. Okay, I'm gonna jam them first. Uh so when I mentioned earlier you said Palmdale and I mentioned Asperia, I got the vibe that you did not know where I was talking about, but I live like I'm right next door to Victorville. Okay, oh I know where Victorville is. Yeah, I'm still getting familiar with all the little like, I got I got that vibe, but you know you, do you know where Main Street is off of the fifteen? Yeah, Victorville is kind of like by the 15 and the 40. Like it's just south of Barstow, right? Kind of by San Bernardino and Barstow. Somewhere, sort of. somewhere around there. Yeah, you know, you know where it is. I'm just making sure. Okay. But yeah, I've because I know of Transplants, the 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 venue that you spoke of. But I've never heard of this band, The Frequency of Bread, which is such a wild uh, band name. Do they have any like professional? Oh, there we go. Let's do like an actual record. Like I want to hear like their recorded tracking. A good call. The frequency of bread. Yeah. I'm gonna I'm actually. You know, I wanna I wanna say something real quick. Um, you were just talking about like doing that little curveball of like an intro. When I first saw those guys, like when I saw their in, they do this cool little intro, and I never would have guessed that that was their style of music. Like, I don't want to give their intro away. Like, you just gotta kind of see it to check it out. But like, they get up and they do this really cool like ritualistic like intro, and then they get up and they play their music. It's like, wow, I was not expecting this, but it was like super cool. What What do you mean like ritualistic intro? Like intro? What it, What is What was abnormal about it? Well, there, there's nothing abnormal. It's 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 really cool, you know. Like they get up. Okay, so so they get up and they have like these like, I don't even know what you call them, like these like capes or whatever. And they get up and they have like a slice of bread in their hands and they do like like one of these like they kind of like slam the bread and like like clap hands <laughs> that's or whatever that's not normal and then they, and then yeah. they get and... <laughs> but it's cool they, they, they that's awesome good, like, you know yeah and then they get behind their instruments and they start playing and it's like you know you expect one thing like given that intro and then it's like a completely different thing but it's like it's really cool so wait they both have a piece of like basic white bread and they just high five with the slap of the bread Pretty much, but they they have like this like table or whatever, and they, they do like it's 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 really cool, you know. You you just gotta see it to to know what I'm talking about. I'm gonna <laughs> so make I'm it a point. I'm gonna make sometimes. it a point 
to go see them live for sure. Especially because they're in our stopping grounds. Bantamweight. We've already been big fans of them, chat. You guys know that. But if you somehow don't know who this band is, you should. Chance, man, definitely take that opportunity and go see Bantamweight live. It's it's definitely unique and and funky and fun and cool. And it's just not every day you see someone playing keyboards while simultaneously drumming. Could you could you ever see yourself playing another instrument while playing your normal instrument? Not like that. No, like I, <laughs> that just blows my mind. Like I, 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 there's, I forget the name of the song, but there's one where he's doing this really complex thing on the keys and keeping this not so simple beat at the same time with his other hand and just doing it all flawlessly. It's so crazy. I, 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 I like I used to have like a set of, like a xylophone next to my kit, and I would sometimes like you know like like Rush did it back in the '80s a lot. Like he would play something on like the bells or whatever. I could do something like that, but like to actually like play keyboard and drum at the same time or something like that 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 takes some serious talent and coordination. So, so here here's what mad, I'm thinking, Ty. Here's what I'm thinking. You said you said you originally want to pick up the saxophone. This is what we're gonna do. We're gonna get you a right. saxophone with the strap, so you, it's always there. You don't have to hold it. And then, boom, you put down a stick. Here's the saxophone, and you're all while still drumming. There we go. I've never seen it before. I've never seen it before. Yeah, I mean, it takes a lot lot of practice, but, yeah, I'll I'll get there. (laughs) Six years from now, we look forward to that show. But, uh, Ty, this is an absolute pleasure, uh, pleasure, brother. Uh, I appreciate it so much. You're you're a very kind soul. Um, Black Pilled, which I've not really dove into that much. I'm going to have to. Because I really like the records that we played, especially the slower one with the piano. Hopefully, you guys use my terrible idea. But if not, it's I totally understand because it's a terrible idea. But um, in general, I will run it past Sean and see what he says. <laughs> in general, man, uh, I'm I'm excited the fact that you work with all kinds of other bands as far as just just uh, telling them advice and in, in your craft and been tracking just local bands and. Uh, Learning, learning the California scene. You're a Chicago boy out here in California, having a good old time. It seems like, and you're a really cool cat, man. So we would oh, yeah. like you back anytime you would like. Other than that, though, please, guys, go support Smile Empty Soul. You see them at a gig near you. You tell them local band Smokeout sent you, and definitely buy some merch. Thank you, thank you, my man. I appreciate the kind words. Ty Del Rose of Smile Empty Soul, everybody. Give me a hell yeah.